uh, Baltic region, members from the industry, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning and a very good afternoon. And on behalf of both the Ministry of External Affairs and Confederation of Indian Industry, it's indeed a privilege uh, for me to welcome you to the India Nordic Baltic, Con uh, Baltic Conclave. We are delighted to have all of you here with us on this uh, virtual platform. A very, very special and a warm welcome to our external affairs minister, Dr. Uh, Honorable Dr. S. Jay Shankar. Dr. Jay Shankar, your constant guidance, direction, and support to the industry has really helped us uh, expand our horizon and reach out to new markets. And thank you very much for gracing the occasion today and being our chief guest yeah, for this very important conference. Very warm welcome also to all our dignitaries, ministers from overseas. We are indeed delighted to have all, all of you here with us today, and thank you for joining us. We had earlier held a Nordic conclave in 2017, and then again another one in 2018. And the first Nordic India Nordic summit to, uh, took place uh, between our Prime Minister of India and the five Nordic countries. Our leaders emphasize that a strong partnership can help spur innovations and sustainable economic growth. And they acknowledge the, that innovation and uh, digital transformation will drive growth in an interconnected world and underpin a growing engagement between our countries. Uh, last year, we had the opportunity to be in the lead uh, 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 of a business delegation from India to the three Baltic uh, nations accompanying uh, the Honorable Vice President of India. That really opened us uh, up to the numerous possibilities uh, of collaborating with the Baltic nations. And we had a very, very good participation from the Baltics as, uh, as uh, at the India-Europe 29 uh, uh, business forum last year. Given the uh, COVID situation today, the engagement with the Baltic region and in, it, uh, and in this backdrop, we are organizing this conclave completely virtually. And this conclave will focus on highlighting specific opportunities in some very key sectors like clean tech or uh, fintech, data and cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, gaming, blockchain, digital infrastructure, and manufacturing. And we have today at this uh, conference over 600 delegates registered not only from our nine countries, but also from uh, 12 other countries. And these are very encouraging numbers as they show the keenness on both sides to engage more deeply with each other and do concrete business. We in the Indian industry believe that there is much to be done to strengthen uh, economic cooperation between our two regions. And uh, we have uh, three key initiatives for uh, to suggest for furthering this. One, since smart, uh, smart uh, factories of the future is a theme of the conclave, we'd like to appraise uh, this, uh, 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 that CII has a smart manufacturing platform, which it, uh, garnered its first partnership with uh, Platform Industry 4.0 Germany. While the platform is working on building, building newer partnerships with Indian states and other countries on specific proposal, our, our specific proposal is really to see how we can showcase Nordic Baltic best practice, use uh, case studies on Industry 4.0 on this platform, including through a map of the region, which gives location-wise and sector-wise information on such Industry 4.0 uh, uh, use case studies. Also on, uh, on board and listing various tech providers from the region on the platform specific to the sectors and capacity building by getting the tech providers to conduct technical sessions and sector specific sessions and webinars. The second proposal is really to set up a India Nordic Baltic innovation uh, and entrepreneurship exchange platform. Uh, Gita, which is the Global Innovation and Technology Alliance, which is a joint venture between uh, the Ministry of Science and Technology of the Government of India and CII. We have launched a new initiative called Gita Innovation Exchange, uh, which is a B2B platform to connect overseas technology products, solutions, service providers with Indian industry and the public sector for forging techno business uh, partnerships. And this platform will give the opportunity to our companies to come together and cooperate on innovative and groundbreaking projects. The CII Startup Center can also be involved, and this platform could support programs like mutual soft landing of startups, startup pitches to large companies and investors, 
and other initiatives that can benefit our SMEs and startups. The third is that uh, we have set up a center for digital transformation to handle organization in their journey of business transformation by effectively employing the best suited technology. The center works on areas like addressing digital maturity, cyber security, skill building, uh, recognition like awards and training activities. And we look forward to collaborating with international partners in all these areas, besides developing a digital directory of solution providers and a best practice repository. These collaborative initiatives will allow our companies in the technology and the innovation space to continue to connect over a longer period of time. And I would like to leave these thoughts with our esteemed dignitaries today. On our part from the industry, we will continue to engage with the speakers, experts, and uh, participants who are uh, from the region in our sector-focused activities, which would really further uh, help build the B2B, uh, B2B linkages. With that, I'd like to once again very warmly welcome all our very senior uh, dignitaries, our honorable ministers, to this very important conclave. So thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to also now invite Mr. Uday Kotak, the president of the CII, to make his uh, remarks, please. Uh, thank you, Chandrajit. Honorable uh, Dr. Jai Shankar and Excellencies. India has been making an effort to engage with the West in multiple ways. The government has called for an Act East and Link West approach in the external policy. The Link West approach emphasizes not only greater engagement with the West in the areas of trade, commerce, science, and technology, but also deepening political partnerships at the global forums on issues of mutual importance. The Nordic Baltic region is a crucial element in the entire Link West policy. While India's overall economic engagement with the Nordic and the Baltic region is low compared to the size of the respective economies, there is significant scope for the future. Potential Indian investors need to appreciate the long-term synergies between India and the region beyond the immediate short-term perspectives. There is also a need to have a pan-Nordic approach and manage resources and costs judiciously to succeed in the region. The region has potential to support the growth in manufacturing sectors, proliferation of, proliferation of digitalization, waste management, and skill development in India. Let me elaborate further. First, a number of initiatives have been set up and started by India, which include the Startup India, Make in India, Janthan Yojana, Smart Cities, which Chandrajit refer, referred to, and unfolding opportunities for companies to launch innovative technologies in partnerships with private and the public sector to continue expanding the digital ecosystem in India. The COVID crisis has brought forward the dig digital technology and FinTech has a, a proven to be a growing rapid sector in India. This presents a unique opportunity for companies from the Nordic Baltic region to take advantage and join in this thriving ecosystem. Second, the government of India has placed, placed special focus in the manufacturing sector. Indian industry would be happy to work with partners in the Nordic Baltic region to promote world-class manufacturing in sectors such as automotive, consumer goods, aluminum products, among others. Third, the Nordic Baltic companies could offer expertise in areas such as water supply, treatment of wastewater, water recharge, conservation and reuse, promotion of innovative technologies in water and waste management, and their adaptation to local conditions. Fourth, the Nordic Baltic biotech industry is highly focused on healthcare, thereby making it an ideal partner for Indian companies to conduct joint research in the life sciences sector. If there is one area where India needs to and will expand in the years to come, it is in the entire area of healthcare and life sciences. Fifth, the Indian infrastructure industry offers immense opportunities for investment and technology partnerships. Nordic companies could consider 
partnering India in sectors such as power generation, telecommunications, ports, roads, highways, airports. Further, I think Chandrajit mentioned about smart cities also in that context and also pension funds and wealth funds from the region can look at expanding their presence in the Indian investment sphere. And I do believe the last point, the sixth point, which is with reference to skills. If there is one area where we can collaborate together is to invest in skill development and training, which is one of the major areas India must focus on. And therefore, the region has excellent technical institutes for training at higher levels. India and Baltic region could collaborate in terms of training of these new skills especially in the light of an increasingly global digital and innovation driven economy with that on behalf of cii and on behalf of all of us in india uh, i would once again strongly urge all the players participants policy makers and practitioners to see how we can expand this uh, relationship in the india nordic baltic region with that may i now request the Honorable Minister, uh, Dr. Jai Shankar, to sh share his inaugural, inaugural address with all of us. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kotak. Uh, dear colleagues and friends, it is a great pleasure to welcome you all, uh, to join you all at the India Nordic Baltic Conclave, hosted jointly by the Confederation of Indian industry, and the Ministry of External Affairs. The quality of participation and the nature of the agenda brings out how well this initiative has been received. Even otherwise, India and the Nordic Baltic nations have much in common. Our shared values have led to a similar outlook towards global challenges and opportunities. They have also been the basis for a substantial trade and investment relationship, one that has grown even further in recent years. That our meetings with many of you, individually and collectively, virtually and physically, has been raised to the summit level speaks for itself. I myself have had the privilege of being in touch with all of you during the course of the year. Friends, but why we, are, why we meet today is not just to reaffirm a strong set of relationships. Our gathering is intended to analyze the extraordinary challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and seriously examine whether the crisis can be turned into an opportunity. Given the hit taken by virtually every economy in the world, it is apparent that recovery is the primary focus. Equally, looking at the uncertainty and the volatility of this period, we are also naturally keen to promote more resilient global supply chains. However, this is not just a moment when we should concentrate only on recovering lost ground. It is also an occasion to do so, and more, in a different and better way. Therefore, to recovery and resilience, we must add reform. And by that, I mean in particular, harnessing the lessons of our pandemic response to serve the cause of global welfare. Our growth must consequently be greener, be smarter, and be more digital. And given the meshing of capabilities, outlook, and ambition, I truly believe that the India-Nordic-Baltic partnership can make a real difference here. It is therefore extremely appropriate that this club is focusing on renewable energy and clean technologies, and the factories of the future on AI and blockchain-led transformation, on supply chain and logistics, and on fintech. Naturally, with a greater digital focus, 
we also need to give more attention to its infrastructure as well as data and cyber security. Underlying all of this, of course, is a focus on engineering and innovation for an India that sees the world as much as a workplace, as a marketplace. These are conversations that must advance further. And not least, all of us today are bound by common maritime interests that are reflected in the importance of developing the blue economy. The learnings from the pandemic response, if applied creatively and imaginatively, can transform governance in many societies. We, in India, have direct experience of providing direct financial and material support to our citizens in this period, perhaps on a scale unprecedented in history. Where public health was concerned, our ability to manufacture required items was only matched by the establishment of dedicated treatment facilities. And all of this was underpinned by an amazing societal discipline and public awareness, the results of motivation and leadership. The real takeaway from this experience is the importance and ability of responding to the rising expectations of an aspirational society. This realization drives the thinking behind Atmanirbhar Bharat, a self-reliant India that would bring its greater capabilities to bear at the global level. This means policies that will promote entrepreneurship, employment, innovation, and skill. It would strike a balance between what we build at home, what the world has to offer, and what we can contribute. It signifies not only a make in India, but a make for the world. Our expectation is that the reforms we have undertaken in domains like labor, agriculture, and education, when combined with making it easier to do business, to create startups, and to promote skilling, will lead to much broader and smoother pathways for international collaboration. And these avenues, as I said at the start, will be greener, smarter, and more digital. I wish this conclave all the best for productive discussions. I thank my colleagues who have joined me at this inaugural session. And I appreciate the efforts of Team CII and Team MEA in putting this event together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jayashankar, for your inaugural address, which really sets the tone for this conclave. And we deeply appreciate yours being with us and get, uh, sharing your thoughts and your vision. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for, for, for that address. Uh, may I now invite uh, His Excellency, Mr. Jeep uh, Sebastian Kofor, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Denmark, uh, to give his uh, uh, remarks and speech, please. Thank you uh, so much. I, I hope that you uh, hear me well. Um, good. Thank you, first of all, uh, Your Excellency, uh, also uh, my good colleague, uh, Foreign Minister Jai Shanka. Very good to see you uh, again, uh, dear colleagues, participants. I, I wish you, first of all, uh, a good afternoon or, or morning, like it's here in, in Copenhagen. Uh, I'm very delighted to, to participate today. I'm very pleased to, to join my colleagues from uh, India, as well from the Baltics uh, and Nordic countries on this occasion. The Nordic and, and the Baltic countries have good experience uh, in cooperation across our region and beyond. This cooperation, this cooperative approach that we have are also behind the new green strategic partnership between India uh, and Denmark. This September, India and Denmark agreed on a green strategic partnership. The shared vision is to deliver on a sustainable development goal and the Paris Agreement in a green and climate-friendly manner. Through the Green Strategic Partnership, India and Denmark have created a solid base for finding mutually beneficial solutions and also very concrete results. Uh, allow me then to highlight four uh, areas 
innovation-driven potential under uh, the new partnership. First, in, in the area of uh, wind power, Denmark has many decades of experience and the outcome are clear. Last year alone, almost 47% of electricity used in Denmark came from wind. We are eager to share our experience and skills. And India's uh, scale market is a key player, regional as well as globally. Under uh, the green strategic partnership, activities will include a uh, focus on lowering the cost of offshore wind power and integrating renewable uh, energy into the power system. In addition, cooperation will include energy planning guided by advanced long-term energy modeling tools 